Welcome to Hurry Up Pinball, a show where I teach you how to work on your pinball machine. Today I will be walking you through the installation process for art blades. Art blades are a great way to enhance the look of your machine and add to that world under glass feel. So let's get going. I selected a set of Tilt Graphics art blades for my Jurassic Park Pro. There are many styles available, so pick one you like. I would highly recommend picking up a bottle of rapid tack application fluid as it will make the installation process easier when applying the graphics to the side of the pinball cabinet. First, slide the pinball machine into position where you can access the right and left side of the cabinet. Be sure to unplug the pinball machine before beginning work. Open the coin door, undo the lockdown bar latches, and remove the lockdown bar. Remove the playfield glass and set it in a safe location. Next, raise the playfield and slide it out to the end of the support bars. Since we will be fully raising the playfield in the next few minutes, we want to remove all the pinballs from the machine. Use the coil eject plunger on the bottom to remove the pinballs. With the pinballs out of the machine, fully raise the playfield till it rests against the back box. Inspect the cables running from the playfield to the pinball machine. On my Jurassic Park, I have three Molex connectors and a Cat5 cable that run from the playfield to the pinball cabinet. If your pinball machine does not have Molex connectors for these wires, you will need to remove the wires where they meet with the boards in the back box. Take lots of pictures and label everything as this will make it much easier to reinstall the playfield and attach the connectors. Undo the Molex connectors between the playfield and the pinball cabinet. It's important that you use the plastic housing for the Molex connectors and don't pull directly on the wires. In addition to the three Molex connectors, I have one Cat5 cable running between the playfield and the pinball cabinet. I will need to remove this cable as well in order to remove the playfield. After I unclipped the Cat5 cable, I noticed there were several zip ties holding the Cat5 cable to the three cables for the Molex connectors. I grabbed a pair of cutters and clipped these zip ties. Be very careful to not cut any wires between the pinball machine and the playfield. With the Cat5 cable removed and the Molex connectors unclipped, the playfield should now freely come out of the pinball machine. Do a quick sweep and check for any additional cables between the pinball cabinet and the playfield. For this next step, you're going to want to lower the playfield and rest it on the support bars. This next part may sound weird, but go grab two paint cans and place them about two feet apart on the floor next to the pinball machine. With one hand on the wood at the front of the playfield and one hand on the handle of the backboard of the playfield, lift the playfield out of the pinball machine and place it on the floor. You'll notice here that I'm using the two paint cans and placing them in the back corners of the playfield. You want to make sure that there's nothing in between the playfield and the paint cans. You don't want to pinch any wires and you want to make sure that nothing is getting smashed. As you can see here, Nothing from the bottom of the playfield is touching the ground. The playfield is completely supported by the support bars and the paint cans in the back corners of the playfield. With the playfield successfully removed, you will now have full access to install the art blades in the pinball cabinet. It is a good idea to check the inside of the cabinet for dirt and dust and wipe down this area if necessary. Remove one art blade from the backing paper. With the art blade removed, you're going to want to grab the rapid tack spray I mentioned earlier and spray a very fine mist on the sticky side of the art blade. Remember, you only want to use a little bit of the rapid tack on the sticky side of the art blade.
When installing the art blade in the cabinet, you're going to want to start from the back. Line the back of the art blade up with any sort of barrier or marker in the back of the cabinet and in the top corner just below the glass guide in the cabinet. Some art blades have cutouts for hinge bolts. If your art blades have cutouts, these are a good place to start when aligning the graphics on the pinball cabinet. Once the front to back distance of the art blade is correct, start at the top of the art blade and make sure you position it so that the art blade does not go above the glass guide in the pinball cabinet. You want to leave about a sixteenth of an inch between the bottom of the glass guide and the top of the art blades. I sped up the footage here so you can see how I take my time and reposition the graphics to get them in the ideal location. I noticed an issue down at the bottom which I'll walk you through in a second. Here you can see the position of the art blade in the back of the cabinet. I noticed that part of the art blade was on top of a washer holding the flipper button. I used an X-Acto knife to trim a little bit of the art blade so it would lay flat against the cabinet. I also had to remove the small clip that centers the playfield. This clip was preventing me from installing the lower part of the art blade in this area. After I removed it and laid the graphics flat, I reinstalled the bracket. With the art blade in place, use a paper towel and wipe down the art blade. You're going to want to look for any small air pockets in the art blades. Because you sprayed these with Rapid Tack, it is possible to work out any air bubbles that may be on the art blade. With installation of the first art blade complete, it's time to move to the other side of the pinball cabinet. Because I knew the playfield centering bracket was going to get in the way, I went ahead and removed it from the other side before installing the art blades. Repeat the previous process for the second art blade, again using a fine mist of rapid tack on the sticky side of the art blade. Take your time repositioning the graphics and make sure that they are about a sixteenth of an inch below the glass guide. Here I am using my X-Acto knife again to cut out the art blade around the washer installed in the cabinet. Don't forget to use a paper towel to wipe down the graphics. If you had to remove a playfield centering bracket, be sure to reinstall it at this time. Now that the art blades are installed, it's time to go ahead and reinstall the playfield. If possible, it's a good idea to have a second set of hands help you reinstall the playfield. This will help make sure that it's centered going into the cabinet and that you don't scratch the art blades you just installed. It is possible to do this process on your own, but it's much better to have a second set of hands to help. Now raise the playfield into position and rest it against the back box. Now it's time to reattach the three Molex connectors and the CAT5 cables I disconnected earlier. I also rewrapped the CAT5 cable around the wires for the Molex connectors and zip tied them back into place. With everything connected, lower the playfield, reinstall the playfield glass and lockdown bar, and close up the cabinet. You can see here what a difference art blades makes in the overall appearance of a pinball machine. So go online, order yourself a set, and get started today. This is Craig with Hurry Up Pinball, and I wanted to say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, show your support for Hurry Up Pinball and click the subscribe button. We can also be found on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram under Hurry Up Pinball.